Right here, tubers. Right, it's important apparently. Right, tubers, we are down in my battery shed. Now, last video I showed you what I was planning on doing and testing all this sort of stuff, so I've moved a little bit forward. However, it took me over two weeks to release that last video since I recorded it. I'm very sorry about that. Time and all that sort of gear. Right, some stuff I'm actually excited about. Plug, battery hasher. I did replace those two packs that were very, very low, and this happened. The picture will go here. And basically, I replaced 54 and 55, and I replaced 55 with one that was of a similar capacity. So I am going to I'm going to continually every time I get really low in the, in the battery bank voltage. I'm going to continually try and improve this thing and just keep replacing my lower batteries because obviously I don't have any more space so that's what I continue to do. Right, moving forward about what this video is. Battery hashing. I actually have it working. Right, come over here so I can show you. Um, basically on my computer screen here we've got the batrium stuff, we've got 16% state of charge, we took out 500 amp hours out of the batteries. Uh, as you can see it's a lot more balanced now that I've been um, playing with more packs and we're getting closer and closer to that 600 amp hours which I always claim my battery was. We've only taken out 3.9 kilowatt hours since midnight last night and we've only put in one kilowatt hour so far this morning. Now underneath here, okay, we have got the battery hasher. Now this is version 1.0 and let me walk you through it. So up here we've got the power coming in from my little um, splitter box and there is 25 millimeter square cable coming down from there. Uh, obviously that's coming through the shunt so it will tell me how much power it's using if I turn the inverters off and stuff like that. Um, I also got my bang good little clamp meter which is actually on spare special so I can put that on there and I can tell how much power is coming into the batteries. Uh, we've got min max clear there we go so it's turned off at the moment now it's interesting when you turn it on the unit itself uses half an amp at 51 volts 51.55 volts so if we do if we do watts we got 51.55 times 0.5 equals 25 watts I think is that how that works? Was that maths correct? So that draws 25 watts. Now that is a, a 720 60 amp DC to DC converter. And that's running my little rig here. And basically the, the, the way this is, this is set up, I've got the cable. So it is a shared negative, which I don't like. Um, given that they're open, that could be pretty dangerous. And I'd like to address that later on down the track. But this is version one. So we've got the positive coming out on this side. Now the positive just goes to a little Pico board. So that runs the, the motherboard itself. And then all the, all the other power is just 12 volts. So I've just picked it up off of the negative and positive here. And I've just cut up a PSU, cut the cables off for the, tw the 12 volt going into the motherboard, the 12 volt coming into the top of the video card, and the 12 volt going into the riser card. Um, and later on down the track I'll put a second riser card on. I'm going to have to re remake this harness. And then I've got fuses here. Unfortunately I don't have fuses on this side. I probably should. And we'll look into doing that in the next version of it. Now it's actually all turned off at the moment. But it is, I think at the moment, yes, it's being controlled by the Batrium. So that, that cable there comes around. And then plugs into my Watchmon uh, expansion board here. Now it's only, it's, I've got two of them plugged in. Now that was the old way I've done it. I'm only actually using one relay now just because of the way the Batrium stuff works. And I didn't understand it properly. So let me show you how this can turn on that based on my shunt voltage. Rightio. So let's go over here. All that we gotta do is click on menu. We click on control logic. And then we've got low shunt volt, right? So if I want to turn this back on again or off, I've got to pass that threshold, that 52 volts. Now let's change that by clicking edit. And we go, it is on at the moment, and we change this voltage. So we've got 
Uh, can we move that a little bit? We can. So we've got 51.63. So if we go 51.6 uh, six one. So we go 6.2. Enter. So 61.62. And we go save. Now the more important part that you've got to do is you've got to worry about um, these two figures here. Now these two figures here are delayed restart. So basically at the moment I've got that set to 600 seconds. So it's got to wait 10 minutes. It's got, it's got to go past this figure here for more than 10 minutes before it'll actually change its state of charge, right? So we want to set that to say um, 10 seconds. Just just for the sake of actually getting this to work. Now all that's turned on, that's all plugged in. Now if we go save, so we've got to get the voltage above that voltage. So what I might do is go down to here, turn off my inverter. So SBU, change it to utility, apply. You hear a little click. Didn't hear a click. Oh, there we go, there's a click. Go, went back to line mode. Right, and now we should have 62. So, oh, we've got 69. Oh, there we go, we missed it. The fan turned on. So that computer turned on via this setting here. Now, because this whole rig is headless, the only thing I have is a little control panel up there on the computer. I won't actually know whether it's mining until I actually see the voltage, uh, the amps go up. I think with one card it does four amps, um, or you start feeling the fans kick in on the card and the heat start to rise. There we go, just started mining so it went up to three. I think from memory that'll go up to like four amps. Three point seven, there we go, probably because it's much cooler in here than I was doing it yesterday. Now if we go up to here, now this, this control panel here, the East Distro, does take a little bit of time to actually kick in. And I am reasonably sure, if we refresh that page, there we go. Now we've got 103 which is in reboot. Uh, the temps is 26 degrees so it hasn't actually started showing up on here. We can click on the 103. Now I've got this all standard because this is just that, E-T-H-O-S. And password is password123. Right, yeah, so that logs into that. Now I can go show minor, S H O O W, space M I N E R, enter. And then that shows us that it is mining at 29 mega hashes. At 7.8 amps. So if we go 7.8 amps, no, what is it? 3.7, so you've got 3.8, 3.8 amps times, we look back over here, and we go menu, and we need the voltage, so it's 51.4, times 51.4 equals 195 watts, so that's pretty good at 48 volt. Right, now if we want to turn it back off again, so we get in the morning and we need to turn it back off again. We're gonna go back to menu, go to control logic. So now we wanna turn it back off again. We got 51.62. So we change that to just below. So we just, uh, actually if we leave it there and then turn a load back on again. So turn uh, utility, go back to SBU, apply. Okay, we should hear a click up here. It does take a few seconds to click change back. And it's saying load line mode on the computer. You hear a little click once it clicks back. It can take up to 10 minutes to actually click back if you've been playing with it. You can't just change settings backwards and forwards on this and expect it to happen instantly. We might actually change that voltage to 51.4.4 volts. Enter. Save. And there we go. 
I think I might speed this up a little bit by simply turning off my solar. Ah, there we go, that just clicked. Oh, that might have been the, so the charge controller clicking over. Ah, we didn't change the, uh, the, the, the transition delay stop. So we've got to change that to 10 seconds as well. Enter, save, amps, that's actually turned off. So there we go, it does work. So you've got to do the transition stop and the transition uh, restart to the time you want. Now, obviously I have it done to 600 uh, seconds, which is 10 minutes. So it's got to completely go past it before it'll change states because you might have a load at that point in time where you either get a, a, a bright lot of sun or you might have the dryer on or something like that so it doesn't you don't want it clicking backwards and forwards backwards and forwards because these relays do have a limited lifespan of turning on and off well there we go tubers i can actually mine cryptocurrency from my battery bank dc to dc so no inefficiencies moving it from DC to AC to DC and 12 volt to 40, whatever. It's gonna stop my batteries from being fully charged, which is a really good thing because these things ramp down once the batteries start to get charged. So if I can keep them from getting fully charged, we use as much power as we possibly can from the solar panels and waste less energy in the long run. Version two, we'll have two video cards. We will try and make this a little bit safer. And version three, if this actually works, we might actually get a second DC to DC. So tubers, thank you very much for tuning in. If you like these videos, smash that like button or the other one if you don't like it, I guess. But if you made it this far, it should be a couple of those. Really helps the channel. Thank you very much for everyone for tuning in. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.